On small productions, we're typically the camera operator, the DP, the director, and every other job that goes along with production, right? So the most important area is absolutely knowing your gear. So in this video, we're going to get to know the Canon C200 body so that we can have a little bit of a head start when we're going after and shooting some of these projects on the Canon C200 as a solo operator or in a one-man band run and gun type of scenario because not all of us are actually buying every camera that comes out some of us are actually renting it and when you rent gear it there is a little bit of a learning curve in getting to know that piece of gear so that you get the most out of your productions. And if you're new to this channel, hello and welcome. Now let's dive right in. The Canon C200 uses the new BP A30 and BP A60 batteries, which were introduced with the Canon C300 Mark II. So if you need extra batteries, those are the types that you should rent or buy. There are two SD card slots, and I use the SanDisk Extreme Pro 280 megabits per second cards without issue. If you own the camera, maybe you could share which SD cards work for you in the comments. There is only one CFast 2.0 card slot and I use the SanDisk and the Lexar cards without issue. I believe that Tomas Villegas, who owns the Canon C200, found other CFast 2.0 cards that work well with the Canon C200, so you should definitely check out his channel because he has a whole ton of insight. While it's not convenient not having multiple CFast 2.0 card slots, it is the exact same approach that Ari took in the Ari Alexa Mini. So then there's that. The viewfinder has a sensor on it to detect when you put your eye into the cup to turn it on or off as needed. If you're operating your C200 outdoors or in direct sunlight and you're not using the actual viewfinder, you should use the viewfinder cover to protect the viewfinder from damage from the sun. The select button between the two CF card slots allow you to select which card the camera will write to when recording. If you open up one of the SD card slot doors and you have relay recording turned on, and why wouldn't you have relay recording turned on? It will automatically switch to the other card. The audio status button will bring up all of the audio channel information on the display for external and internal audio sources. You can select the audio gain or manual gain per channel from the audio controls. So I've personally never used the auto audio gain function on any of the Canon cameras, and I'm not really sure which scenario would actually allow me to take advantage of that feature. If you're using the 1 8 audio input jack to plug in something like the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, you will have the ability to set different gain settings for the left and right channel. So where this is really convenient is that you can actually set the microphone gain settings, say for the right channel, to be considerably lower than the left channel, allowing you to have a safety track of sorts in case your scene gets really loud for whatever reason. With the move of the XLRs to the body, you should note where each of the XLR inputs are managed from. So I'm mentioning this because it actually tripped me up. I was working in a low light environment, right? Studio lights, where basically what we're shooting is lit, but the camera itself and the area where the camera was, was not lit. So I was trying to make um, input adjustments on XLR1 from the XLR2 position. So just keep that in mind because that did, like I said, trip me up on an actual production. The menu button triggers the menu just as it would if you pressed it directly from the display. The SDI output can only output a 1080 signal, so it is not 4K. The C200 uses a standard headphone jack and uses a mini USB to connect to a computer. The headphone preamp is not award-winning. So if you think you're going to be able to get away with something like earbuds, that's not going to really work. You're going to want to actually use real monitors or cans that cover up your ears so that you can get the best uh, sense as to what kind of audio is coming into your camera. The Ethernet port is a great addition to the C200, making this camera ready 
for a multicam live production environment. The power connector is a locking connector. While the battery life is great on the C200, I personally like to use the house power whenever I'm doing a sit down interview or in any studio setting. The hand grip is adjustable and that comes in handy if you have the camera on a slider or a tripod giving you more control and flexibility with your shots. I've never used the Canon remote, but the C200 is compatible with this remote. Having a full-size HDMI input is very nice. If you come from shooting with a DSLR, you're gonna find this full-size HDMI as a really nice upgrade. Button number 10 and button number 11 are programmable. The default for button number 10 is push auto iris and the default for button number 11 is one shot autofocus. The iris wheel on the body is new which allows you to control the iris of the lens but you can also assign this wheel to control other things like gain. There are multiple record trigger buttons making it easy to trigger record from either side of the camera. This next set of functions are dual function. If you're on camera mode, you have white balance and auto white balance. If you're on media mode, you have play pause button and the index button. When the Canon C200 camera came out, there was talk of not being able to review your 4K clips on camera. That's actually not true and was also not true when the camera was released. To play a clip, you have to switch the camera to media and press the pause play button on the camera body itself. That will allow you to review the clips in camera. The C200's power button gives you the ability to actually lock the camera, which locks all the controls on the camera so that nothing can be changed by accident. The measuring hook is where you would take the measurement to set critical focus. If you follow Matt Workman from Cinematography Database, you'll notice that he uses that symbol in his logo. The buttons on the side of the camera are self-descriptive but can be assigned to perform other functions if needed. The only exception would be the ND filter plus or minus button. Magnification allows you to punch in to check critical focus. Peaking allows you to also check focus. Zebras allow you to check your highlights and can be adjusted to help you avoid clip highlights or set the right IRE value for your skin tones. And you also have a waveform monitor to help you judge exposure. The last row allows you to set or change your ISO gain values. You should remember that if you are going to change the ISO or gain values, you then should also run the camera through its auto black balance process. And what I'll do is I'll put a link up above in case you want to check out a video on how that works. The shutter button does just that, lets you make adjustments to shutter, and the display button allows you to clear up what is visible in your display. I would say that after setting up your scene or your shot, you should probably clear the display of all of the information so that you can make sure that only what you want is actually in frame and you're not distracted by all of that information. The exhaust fans are on either side of the camera. If you're shooting outdoors or in weather and you're using some sort of protection for your camera, just make sure that you're not blocking the exhaust so that you don't end up damaging your camera. So there you have it, a quick Canon C200 body overview to help your pre-production prep so that you can get the most bang out of your production and time with the C200. And if you're one of the lucky ones who is going to be purchasing the Canon C200, then this should help you get a little bit of a head start so that you can dive in and start shooting as soon as you charge the batteries. So be sure to subscribe so that you can catch all the videos in this series. Until next time, I'm Carlos with Media on Q, helping you compete in today's web economy. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.